What's up, YouTube? My name is Tyler Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about LFOs. LFOs are a crucial aspect of many of the effects you're probably already familiar with, such as phasers, flangers, vibratos. Using LFOs can give your music much more movement. Electronic producer Arca has said that the reason his music sounds like it's warping over time is because he slightly detunes his LFOs throughout his tracks. The first example of LFOs I want to talk about are LFOs and third-party plugins. Today we're going to be using some plugins from the Sound Toys suite. And if you guys haven't checked out Sound Toys yet, I definitely recommend it. They have everything from grain delays to amp modeling to regular delays to automated filters. Just a bunch of great effects that have excellent preset banks. So if you're tired of using native Ableton plugins or whatever DAW you're in, I would suggest trying out Sound Toys. So before the video, I made some pretty basic chords just to give you guys an example of what these LFOs and third-party plugins will sound like. So here's some chords I made with Iris. Just real basic harmonic minor one to four to five chords. So the first third-party plugin that I want to show you guys is the Phase Mistress. So we'll play these chords again. Turn the phase mistress on. And then over here by rate, this is actually an LFO tool. So you can switch between LFO or tempo synced modulation. So modulation, this is where you see this rhythm happening. So if we switch back to LFO, we can change it by frequency rate. So the modulation is speeding up as we speed up the rate. Bringing it down decreases the amount of modulation we're applying to the phase mistress. So this is really useful just in general making movement with a phaser. The next plugin I want to go over LFOs in is the Filter Freak. So let's keep playing these chords. Turn the Filter Freak on. And now you see the same section that was in the phase mistress. So you have the option of switching it back to tempo sync, envelope, you can adjust ADSR, whatever you prefer to get the movement going. So right now we're on LFO again. So we can apply the same technique that we used in the phase mistress to speed it up. Speeding up the rate speeds up the modulation. A good portion of third-party modulation plugins have LFO tools, so just look for maybe rate or uh, it could just start with a tempo sync, so it might say rhythm at first, and then you'll have to switch it back to LFO if you want to adjust it by frequency. Um, the rhythm just functions the same as an LFO, just on the tempo grid. The first native Ableton LFO tool I want to go over is the Max for Live LFO plugin. This is by far one of the most powerful plugins in Ableton, just based off the fact that you can map the LFO to almost anything. For this example, I'm going to play a hat loop made up of eighth notes, and our goal is just to humanize the hats. The first thing that we'll do is mute the chords that we were playing earlier and unmute the hat loop. So we'll play the hat loop that we have right now, just standard eighth notes, nothing interesting going on, no sort of movement or anything. So this first LFO I have here is mapped to the volume knob. So we'll turn this on. And now it feels like we have some sort of program velocity. Although there's no program velocity in the clip, it's just automating the volume knob back and forth. So right here we have it synced to the tempo grid. We could also turn this off and go back to adjusting the rate, the frequency of the LFO. Typically I like to keep it on sync just because Whenever you are playing clips from the beginning of a section, it starts off at the same spot. While frequency doesn't always have a concrete starting point. So basically, your clip could sound different every time if you're on frequency, unless you freeze the track or print it to audio. So let's play the hat loop again and add some more LFOs. So the second LFO I have right here is mapped to the detune knob. So we come over to controls on the hi-hat sample 
and you see the detune is moving back and forth, synced to this grid, the same way that this is. This is just a longer rate. Let's add another LFO and see how much movement we can get out of this eighth note pattern. So this LFO, I've mapped to the start knob of the sample. So slowly, you see it adjusting the playhead. I want to give a shout out to Set1 for his Ableton Live School tutorial on humanizing hi-hats and drum patterns by using LFOs. He definitely inspired the mapping of LFOs to the start knob of samples for this tutorial. If you guys weren't sure on how to map an LFO to a parameter, just come back over here. It will say map on the LFO plugin. Click it and you can click any parameter, almost any parameter. And as soon as you hit play, your LFO should be active. The next Ableton LFO tool I wanna to go over, LFOs in native plugins. Over here we have an auto filter. So let's play the hat loop again. Let's turn the auto filter on. And already I've set a LFO. So if this wasn't set, this cutoff would stay the same right here. But this LFO that's built into the auto filter, it will adjust the frequency. So there's no sort of visual feedback on this plugin itself. Um, and that's not a problem. If you've used it a lot, you start to just hear what it's doing. Um, if you really wanted to see this moving, you can turn the LFO on the auto filter down and actually just use one of Max for Lives and map it to the frequency knob. Another native audio effect that incorporates the LFO tool is the frequency shifter. I like using the frequency shifter to really mess up the harmonics and overtones of sounds and give them a sort of different space. Frequency shifters are also a useful panning device. Uh, when, when you start messing with the phase of a frequency shifter, you can really get some wild effects with panning. So let's play the hat loop again and turn the frequency shifter on. So right now we have Raid again. We can adjust it by frequency or adjust it by the grid. Another audio effect that utilizes LFOs that can give your hi-hats more movement is the auto pan. So if you're not a huge fan of automating panning up here, uh, I definitely suggest trying out the auto pan. So let's turn that on and see what we can do with the LFO. So we're starting out in the middle. We're kind of all over the place from the frequency shifter, so let's turn that down a little bit. So now with the auto pan, you feel the hi-hat getting much wider and we can adjust the rate here just the same way we do rate everywhere else with our LFOs. So the higher the frequency is, the faster the panning is taking place. And once again, we can tempo sync the LFO as well. So I hope some of those tips helped you guys out. I know my first couple years of producing, I never touched LFOs because I thought they were complicated, but really they just give your music more movement and save you from having to do unnecessary automation. If you guys have any requests for future music production tutorials or mixing tutorials, please don't hesitate to either send me an email or just leave a comment below. I appreciate new subscribers and you guys can expect a lot more content from me in the coming months. 